Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And welcome wherever you are as we come together to celebrate this Sunday liturgy. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us that we are not to live from the flesh, but from the Spirit. And at times, perhaps, we find ourselves living more from those desires which we know don't lead us to God, but rather lead us into ourselves. And so as we begin this Eucharist, let's pause and ask the Lord to help us to live from the Spirit that lives in the depths of our hearts. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And let's pray together. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You were seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you day after day, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. 
I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. I will bless your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, if the spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. I want to begin by asking you to pause for a moment And just make a mental list of the burdens that you carry right now. Perhaps those two of the people whom you are close to. Just take a few seconds now to call those to mind. You see, friends, burdens can come in all shapes and sizes. Many people are burdened by worry at this time about finances and health, the future, unemployment. But there are also burdens like responsibility, 
and stress and disappointments, hurts, bitterness, guilt, illness, addiction, or maybe even a relationship that is difficult. Burdens can be personal or they can be institutional. Burdens can sometimes be resolved by personal effort. And sometimes they shift when circumstances shift or change. Or maybe when an institution intentionally chooses to change. Some burdens are always with us. Perhaps their weight can shift from time to time and maybe they get a little bit lighter, but somehow they are always there. We are always aware of them. Like the breakdown, for example, of a relationship. And some burdens can feel all-consuming. They engulf us or someone else who is close to us. Like, for example, the burden of addiction. All of us carry burdens in one way or another, albeit that they are different. And we have in these past months become more acutely aware of the burdens that we carry and those around us are laden with. They are part and parcel of human life. And you would know your burdens much better than I do. In today's Gospel, Jesus does two things. One, he seems to bear his soul. He speaks of his unique relationship with God. Father, he says, Lord of heaven and earth. A way of talking to God we have not seen before. And the second thing he does is he reveals to us the way that God sees and what God wants to do. How God wants to embrace us in our weariness. The second part of that gospel that we heard from Matthew is unique to Matthew and echoes the wisdom found in the book of Sirach. When Ben Sirach invites his listeners to take up the yoke of his teaching. Notice that Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to take away all your burdens. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. And then he invites us like Ben Sirach to take his yoke upon him. You know, friends, for too many Christians, Jesus is like a divine magician who we want to wave a wand and wipe away all our struggles and difficulties. But that's not how it works. And when we believe in that, we trick or dupe ourselves. Rather, Jesus accompanies us. He tries to give us perspective and tries to make us help ourselves to face the struggles of our lives by making good decisions, by being discerning about what we choose to do. Perhaps it helps for us to picture a yoke, because a yoke is a harness that is shared between two oxen, which allows them to work together as a team. And I think the image that Jesus uses today is a twofold invitation for us. First, the invitation is to come to Jesus with our burdens, to bear our souls before him as he does before us. Can you really tell God about your burdens? In the same vein, are you able to share with God 
that which you delight in, that which gives you life. In his spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius invites us and encourages us to talk to God as we would to a close friend. Are we really able, are you really able to share what burdens you, what you struggle with, with the Lord as you would to a close friend? You know, so often we are brought up in a culture where we simply make arrow prayers. We pray for what we need or for what others need, and that's where we leave it. Today we're invited to bear our souls, our struggles, and our joys in conversation with the Lord. And I think the second invitation today is to humbly and meekly see ourselves, others, and our lives as Jesus sees us. That's what putting on the yoke of Jesus means. Taking his worldview, being on his team, seeing through his eyes. The message, translation of the scriptures, translates this verse as, Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. And that's the invitation to us. Jesus gives us rest. He calms the storms that so often seem to brew when we are faced with struggle and burden. But he also offers us the means to cope with and to face and carry the load of our lives if we walk with Him and work with Him. Being yoked to Jesus does not mean that He takes away all that weighs us down, but rather being yoked with Him means that He is with us. And again, that translation in the message captures this so well. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Being yoked to him means that we see through another perspective, one that does not deny struggle or try to negate struggle, but one that faces struggle with great humility, meekness, and mercy. And that, friends, is the good news of Jesus. He is with us. He offers us more than we are able to see. Jesus helps us to face the burdens of our lives, not feeling trapped or cornered, but freely and treading lightly if we take his yoke upon us. And so ask yourself today, how will I respond to this wonderful invitation? Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. So let's join in praying together now the creed, and today we will use the Apostles' Creed. And so we pray, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so, friends, we have heard God's Word, 
And we now bring in response to that word our prayers and our petitions before the Lord. For the grace to be childlike, that we may learn dependence upon God and surrender our attempts to control our lives through knowledge, power, and possessions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace to surrender control, that we may let Jesus ease our burdens and allow him to journey side by side with us in every event of our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a greater appreciation of the Sabbath, that God will show us how to disengage from our busyness and technology so that our minds and spirits can be refreshed through prayer and reflection, engaging in relationships and appreciating nature. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For freedom from fear, that God will help us to surrender our fear and anxiety into the hands of the one who loves us, and for the grace to have renewed confidence that God will provide for us in every circumstance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are weary in body, mind, and spirit, that the spirit will restore strength to the physically as to the physically exhausted, hope to those who are emotionally worn out, and energy to all who are exhausted through loving services of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who struggle to sleep, or with getting worse that God will free them from worry, help them to trust in God's providence, and grant, and grant them restful sleep. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who need healing, particularly those with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will ease their suffering, restore them to health, and guide all who are caring for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, our God, these are our prayers that we make in faith and in confidence through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit to the vine and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this offering dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, 
and day by day bring our conduct close to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills with us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women, whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending with all the angels, we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And granted by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in a bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, Butti our Bishop, Duncan his assistant, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Granted all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. And keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them 
to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our pilgrimage on earth is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus says to us, Come all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. And so we come before the Father in the words that he himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to pray for peace in our own hearts, in our families, in our community, and indeed our country and our world. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take take away away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you once again for joining us from wherever you are in prayer. And may this week be one in which you really take to heart those words of Jesus, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and to serve God by loving and serving one another. Thanks be to God.